Hi folks, in this video I'm going to give you an overview of the various search options you can use in Kibana to query Elasticsearch. Searching is Kibana's bread and butter and an art unto itself, but the truth is that it's not always straightforward. Let's start with some simple searches. The most simple search is the free text search, which when used is performed against all indexed fields, including the all field. So if no specific fields entered, the search will be done on all of the fields. So if, for example, you're inspecting web server logs, you could search for a specific browser type. As you may have noticed, free text searches are not case sensitive, unless you use double quotes, in which case the search results show exact matches to your query. Next up are the field level searches. To search for a value in a specific field, you need to add the name of the field as a prefix to the value. Say for example, you're looking for a specific web server response. Enter the name of the field and the specific response type. And this will limit results to those messages containing this response. But, and this is an important but to understand, Using field level searches also depends on the field type. Analyzed fields are totally case insensitive, so you can search using uppercase or lowercase or a mix of both. For non-analyzed fields though, searches are case sensitive and have to be an exact match. And that's also the reason why you can't use wildcard searches for this type of fields. We'll get to that later. In our case, we're analyzing the message field. So let's see what happens when we search a non-analyzed field for an incorrect value. By the way, you can check what fields are being analyzed by Elasticsearch from the Settings tab in Kibana. Another field level search option is to search for a range within a field. If you use square brackets, this means that the results are inclusive. If you use curly brackets, this means that the results will exclude the specified values in the query. You can also combine the two types of brackets, but be sure to follow the syntax rules, otherwise the search will fail. Next up, wildcards. So I'd like to see all the web server responses ranging from 400 onwards. To do this, we're going to use the asterisk symbol. You can use the asterisk for multiple characters and the question mark when you want to replace a single character. Now remember the difference we talked about between analyzed and non-analyzed fields? When you use wildcards without quotes, the whole search content is converted to lowercase. So if you're looking at a non-analyzed field with an uppercase value, there won't be any match. Now here's just a small tip for you when working with wildcards. If you're working with a large data set, try and avoid using leading wildcards. These will most likely take ages and might even crash your system. Using the exists prefix for a field, we'll search the documents to see if it exists and display results accordingly. So if you're looking for logs with a specific field, this is how you search for them. And using missing does the exact same opposite. It's time to take it up a notch. The next type of searches I want to talk about involve using logical statements. These are quite intuitive, but require some finesse as they are extremely syntax sensitive. These statements include using the Boolean operators and, or, not, plus, and minus. Going back to our Apache response theme, I'm going to search for Apache access logs with only the 400 or 500 response type. Note the use in this case of parentheses for more complex statements that include a subquery. 
Moving on, you can also enter a search for a regular expression. To do this, you need to wrap the expression with forward slashes and enter your expression. The last type of search I'd like to show is the fuzzy search. Using the fuzzy operator, you can search for terms that are similar to your search terms. This can prove very useful when your data has spelling mistakes. What the fuzzy search actually does is gives you terms with a maximum of two changes. Changes can be either insertions, deletions, or substitutions of one character. Okay, that's it for now, guys. It's impossible to cover all the various and available options in Kibana, but we covered the essentials, I think. Your next step after searching is, of course, visualizations, and you can check our visualizations video to get started. Thanks for watching.